right guys happy Friday freezing Friday I mean it's not cold cold but I'm getting kind of sick of the cold I think you heard that in the last video uh, just not in the mood to to uh, continue on with any of the other projects I got going on right now so I thought I'd do something different today uh, make a video and uh, at least make it semi-productive so looking around the shop I'm trying to think of what I want to do what I want to try and I want to try something new and I decided that I'd try some of that. I'll put my glasses on to make sure you focus. So I've seen it done. It'd be interesting to try. Um, we're going to take some chainsaws and chainsaw uh, chain. Forge well them together, see what we get for a billet, and then we'll go from there to see what we're going to do. But at least it'll be something, even if I'm just making billets for raw material for some, some other projects in the future. Uh, I've never done chain, uh, not uh, chainsaw blade chain. Uh, I mean, it's it's got to be kind of odd because it's got to be a mixture of soft and hard, and I don't know. I'm not sure what the what the material turned out like. But that's the project for today. Stay tuned, and let's let's see how this one turns out. If I ever do if I ever win, I uh, do another motorcycle chain project. Um, I'm, I'm certainly going to take a different approach. Some of you guys have made suggestions, and I and I agree to it. Um, I'm not just going to take this chain and roll it up like I did the motorcycle chain and hope the heck it forges together. I'm going to go ahead and cut these things off into particular lengths, get them nice and you know nice and neat to each other the best I can. Try to eliminate as much air as possible. Stack those things up so that when it comes time to compress this to remove the air and then actually do the forge weld, uh, I think I have a better chance than I did with the motorcycle chain. If you remember in that video, I had links flying all over the place. So I'm going to cut these up into. I'm not sure, let's say six inch maybe, six to eight inch lengths and, uh, and weld them together and we'll see what that brings us. Cut, I stacked them uh, on edge um, trying to create some type of density and then I thought I could weld these together it's odd that uh, as I was stacking I chose this particular width and it ends up being six chains wide so six 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 so luckily I got a few more <laughs> because well not that I'm superstitious or anything right yeah right so we don't need any bad juju to start off with that's for sure so we'll go ahead and do seven. Lucky seven, that makes sense. Seven, seven, seven all the way across. We'll weld them up and then we will um, weld them together. Now these things are pretty damn dirty. I probably should have soaked them in some vinegar or something to clean them up a little. But we'll let the fire and the borax do what it can do and we'll see how it turns out. I bet you we'll be just fine. Alrighty, let me get these welded up. We got these three individual ones. I'm going to stack them up. Go teeth to teeth on this one. And let's see, I got good ends on these. Which one? This is a little warm still. Go teeth to tooth on that one. And tang to tang on this one. I like that. Gives a nice condensed and almost interlocked kind of pattern there. So I like how that looks. Clamp them down, weld both sides in a few spots, center. 
And we'll go start cleaning this thing off in the fire. Holy cow, is it full of dirt and grease. I use about $50 worth of wire and tax, tax my duty cycle trying to weld this handle on. I hope I got enough of a weld on there to do something. Uh, there it is all stacked up. As I look at it now, I'm really wishing I had gone about half this size. But hey, we're going to do what we got. Use what we got. So let me get it in the fire. Let me start getting this, this oil and crap burnt off and brushed off. And, and then we'll see what we, got, what we got to work with. All right, we're just going to go through a few heat cycles here just to uh, burn off some of that crap that's on the inside. And once that's burned a little bit, we'll flux it a few times and go from there. I think I bit off too much chain. I really do. In the end, once I see how little bit of steel I have, I'm going to be like, well, I could use more. But to get that forge weld, especially because the chain is dirty, I don't know, I'm a little concerned, but hey, live and learn. Cleaning. I do with a cable, whack that on the anvil, and it'll help knock out some of the stuff that's inside. Hopefully. Hopefully. One more time. I think we'll go ahead and throw some flux in there. Let's see exactly what that does. Just so you guys don't think I didn't do it. Sometimes you yell at me. For flux, I'm using borax, and I get questions all the time. Where do I get flux? Where do I get flux? Um, Laundry, the laundry section in your grocery store is going to have 20 mule borax. That's all it is. What that flux will do down inside there is it'll liquefy, hopefully float away some of the crap that's in there as it melts into a liquid. Oh, come on down here. Hopefully. Now, let me get this in the fire before I start gassing. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. First end up to a forge well temperature. Do you need flux? Obviously not. There's videos on YouTube that show you how to weld without flux. If you're welding really clean stuff, you got a nice clean fire, I think, you know, you know what, I'll, I'll do a video on it just to show that even idiots like me can do it. Um, but, what does it hurt? And for three dollars you buy a box that'll last you for a freaking year probably so um, I don't take any chances I'm pretty methodical I flux I, uh, I go through a three three weld cycle when I'm when I'm doing typical weld which with chain it's a little different um, everybody has their own technique if you find one that works congratulations because forge welding isn't an easy thing to do I've done a little bit what I want to do is compress this before I forge weld it so I'm just gonna start Trying to turn this into as close to a solid block as possible, hopefully without breaking off any links in the process. Once I start losing links, then I'm in big trouble. But get as much of that air out as possible before you even attempt to do the welding. Without Especially with this freaking chain and motorcycle chain without breaking off the links yet. Alright, step one for show. Consolidate. This thing up almost to temperature now. I'm going to do something different. Typically, when I forge well, I uh, do light taps. And this one, since there's so much air, I'm going to try to get that air out as quick as possible.
I didn't do any light tapping, that's for sure. So we got so many crooks and crevices in here. Uh, working inside like I am, at that point you do a quick check to make sure you didn't throw a spark in your wood pile or something. Whew, it's hot. But in this case, I wanted to get rid of that air as quickly as possible, so that's why I went with the hard strokes. So uh, I think I'm going to come back and do this section one more time, and then we'll move up the billet. Fluxing in between each, each time. That's what I do. You want to weld without flux? Knock your sacks off. Got no problem with you doing that. My hat's off to you. Right, let's bring it up for the heat one more time. We're just about there. Come back in. Check everything looks good. Now I can see right now I'm not welding up in this direction. So at this point, I'm just going to gently tap these guys together, close that gap. Alright, so that on the next heat I can go ahead and weld those in that direction. When you start hammering a, to a not totally welded item, uh, as it cools, all you're doing well, you stand a good chance of just fracturing the welds that you created. You got to be very careful about that. Fluxing again. I'll tell you, those that weld without flux, everything looks good. They're probably a little safer because the stuff that you see flying out like freaking crazy when I bring that out of the fire. To make those first few hits, that's that red hot flux and uh, dangerous to you and dangerous to any burnable items around you. So, you know, uh, we'll, we, we'll, we'll investigate this fluxless thing sometime. Here now. Hopefully, we are getting closer. Something. that's in the world of solid. And I'm shocked at how much steel I'm getting out of that piece. The fireplace cracking. I heard something stamping and popping over there. I hate doing this in closed quarters. All right, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. Out of my fingers. Should probably have full gloves on today. We're getting there, we're getting there. Let me go back without flux this time. We're gonna go nice and hot, because I wanna try making sure I got that, the inner pieces of that thing worked out. Or forged welded together, I mean to say. Make sure you have one if you're working inside. Even outside. Make sure you have some type of backup plan. flying a little farther than I looked at that time. Alright, I like it. It's looking really good. You don't know till the fat lady's sung on this particular. Sure. And I'll tell you, that looks like enough steel right there for a knife, but we'll go ahead. As much as I don't want to, I'm gonna consolidate back here since we're hot. Take another couple inches off of this. and weld up here one more time and I think I'll call it good enough for that enough. Whew. 
Enough for the first one. I'm surprised how much steel I'm getting out of that chain. Much more condensed than a motorcycle chain. Apparently. Or at least the way I had it packed anyway. So I'm going to flux it one more time. We'll go back in for the, hopefully the second final weld there. You see those little sparks flying? We're going to finish this weld up. I hope. Man, a lot of stuff flies when you do that. Question is, boys and girls, do we want to try to do this piece? Or do we cut our losses? Try to get this consolidated. I want to do another couple inches. Every time you hit here, you're stressing the edge of that last well. I hate that. It's got to be done, I guess. Man, there's a lot of steel right there, though. I don't know. I'm not totally welded. Because I could cut that, fold it, and re weld it. And have plenty of steel. And then come back and do this as another piece. I like that idea. Except I got a handle on this already. Oh, let me think about it. I'll decide. Move forward on this heat. I'm consolidating back here the best I can. I don't want to work too much towards that weld yet. That's where I want the next weld to be. I'm just trying to get shit knocked out of it. Gently. Try to bring it together the best I can. I see these folds up here, I'm not exactly happy with it. I want to get back on that section. But I'm going to take another couple inches, I think, is what I'm going to do. Alright, let's go for a well. I'm going to go a little hotter than I would normally here because I'm having trouble getting both sides out of the fire where I want. I'm hoping that heat will come through. Alright, here we go. Just let it burn up the oxygen a little bit. here I'm not happy with the rest of it doesn't look too bad I couldn't see what I was doing when I pulled it out and I hit on the edge before I hit on the flat but uh, it doesn't look like we're in too bad a shape right now for our first weld anyway let's flux her and get her back in let's hope this will do it Thing. Looks like a solid piece of freaking steel to me. Whew. That's as far as we're gonna go. I'm a little worried about that. Remember that piece that was on top there? There's still a little fissure in there, but hopefully we can work that out one way or another. Alright, I think what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to go back to welding heat on this this down here. See how we have different thicknesses here? We're the same thickness down through here, but I'm a little uh, wider here. So I'm going to go back to welding heat on that and try to get that down to the same size 
and then I think we'll fold the sucker and see what we get by doing that. It's been about one hour since we started. That's including cutting the chain and talking to you at the beginning too, so a lot of work, but still an hour. Before I go back to hammering like crazy on that end, I want to clean it off once here. At least get some of that crap off of there. Man, I should have finger gloves on today. I keep saying it, but I don't do it, do I? Alright, let's go up to a welding tent. And do about getting, god dang it, this thing where I want it to be. Same width all the way down as I'd like. Alright. Well, I'll tell you, I wish this was flatter all the way across, but it is what it is. Uh, what I'm going to do now, just since we're playing around, Let's heat this sucker up. Let's put a twist in it, flatten it back out, and then uh, and then uh, fold it and weld it again. See what happens. Hopefully, I'm not screwing myself because if my welds aren't there, the twist isn't going to be a very pretty thing, is it? I don't like the fact that I'm rectangular, but we're going to do it anyway. Go home, right? That's what they say sometimes. Get this down here like that. Get this in here. We'll twist. Stay together, piece. Stay together. Not doing too bad at all. That's where I'm going to stop. It's a lot of twisting. More than I expected to do. Never done this. Put a twist in something I'm forge welded. First thing that I've obs I'm observing is that we stay together. Works are pretty damn amazing if you ask me. So who knows what that's going to turn out to be. We're going to clean this sucker up. We're going to weld that sucker flat again. Wow. That's pretty, pretty damn cool if you ask me. Pretty damn cool. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I didn't take you with me, did I? Dang it, dumbass. First time with a video. All right. So I cleaned it up. It's pretty darn cool. We stayed together pretty well, I'm surprised. So let's heat her up, flatten her out, see what we got. Four welding temperature hits here. Go back in. It almost looked like it wasn't hot enough. We're hot enough there. Oh, did you see that? That's interesting. Interesting. Everybody is safe. But <coughs> right, I lost the end. Which I was gonna nip off that much of it anyway. So that's interesting that I lost that. It wasn't part of the game plan. Funny. I hope I ain't got nothing on fire. That's still hot. But we'll take a peek at that once it cools down. Alrighty. Alright, I'll bring this in a little bit more. Not exactly how. 
happy what's going on there, quite honestly. Not exactly happy what's going on there. I think that twist might have been a mistake. Let's go ahead and weld this up here, and then we'll fold it and see what the hell we got. I'm starting not to like the way it looks. And the lesson might be, be grateful what you got. Don't try to go too far. But it might also be, hey, that freaking worked. to that sucker. That's what I'm thinking right now. But we're going to find out here in a few minutes. Heat it up. My shit too goddamn small. Alright, I was happy with the width I had before, but now look what I got. So the question is, do I go back and flatten this out? Do I try to butt weld these two together? Swear to God. I swear to God. I wish I knew what I was doing sometimes, but sometimes I think I'm an idiot. But I'm going to cut it, fold it over, and we're going to try to weld it. We're going to go with this. Let's clean this up. And I want that to be my back. We will cut it right there. I think we'll be good. best we can before we do the bend. A little cold, I hope it don't break on me because then I'm welding it. Get that snug with a bug and a rug like that. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to flux in between these things. Let my spoon go. That flux run down in there a little bit. And then we're gonna try to stick her together. There, keep a second to chill. Here we go. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna come back and flux this up here. I'm sure that didn't take. And uh, clean it up first. And then we'll weld that together and then we'll work on the whole thing I don't want this top part to be peeling me out seems to me this is probably the hardest weld to do this kind of narrow butt joint like that face joint the fails, it fails. We still got some some patterned steel in there if I can't get the two pieces to stick. Alright, so I like what happened up here. Just kind of manually scarf that end in. But I don't like this groove that's in here and in here still. So we're going to go back, we're going to flex it up, and we're going to go ahead and take the groove out 
And then we're gonna come back on an edge weld again. Almost an hour and a half, and I'm getting kind of sick of this fork welding stuff today. Oh boy. One thing that I'm doing with this as it's heating up is I'm rotating it 180 degrees or 90 degrees, trying to distribute that heat all the way through and around. And please be the end of it. Looking a little better. Not quite where I want it to be though. But that worked. So we're going to clean the crap out of this and do that one more time. I freaked up, I pulled it out, I got so excited I went on the edge rather than the side, and I really want to get that side done first. Okay, do or die. That's the end of it. Or at least that's what we're going to call the end of it. Now I'll tell you what I got going on here. I'll tell you how I'm going to fix that problem. As much as you guys may not like it. <laughs> Where am I? Can I see? Yeah, you see those lines? So doing a, a butt joint like that, I don't know how to do it right. But, uh, or if you can do it well. So I'm going to take the grinder and grind those out so that I got where I am welded. I'm sure I'm welded in the middle there a little bit. So it'll take off a millimeter or something like that. All right, there's our uh, billet. I think I'm going to be okay. What we're going to do now is just kind of flatten this out in width and we want to see if that center line stays. Um, let me think about that. Flatten it that way. If it fails, it'll fail down the middle. If I flatten it out this way, it'll split up like the like the other knife just did. So we're gonna we're gonna go this way with it. Back up project. We created a war hammer. <laughs> I don't know. I could bend that sucker 90 degrees and turn it into a point with a little cable handle on it like that. Let me get back where you can see it. Where am I? Here I am. <laughs> can you imagine that as a point on the end? That yeah, would be one scary looking zombie killer. I just might do that actually. I got that piece normalizing over there. I just want to give it a chance to kind of relax. Uh, I took the piece that broke off that I, I, I'm I, I, it, I don't think I burnt it off, although it acted like I did. Um, I think it was the piece that was in the vise when I did the twist, so I might have put too much stress on it when I twisted it. But anyway, I cleaned it up. I ground it up. Let's go ahead and throw it in the etch while we're waiting. And let's see if we what kind of pattern we get. Now this would be the untwisted. This would just be the chain flattened without the twist nor the fold. So we'll see. And there she is. And believe it or not, I don't see a whole, wait a, minute, a whole hell of a lot of pattern in there. I'm very surprised. It's just, I don't, I honestly don't see any pattern whatsoever. I don't know what we're going to end up with here when we get done. And that's just, that's the chain flattened down. So. I hope we get something for crying out loud. I got the piece in the fire. We're going to go ahead and turn it into something right now. I think a dagger. I'm in the mood for a dagger. I haven't done one in a long time. Uh, and with that lying down the center, it might be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, it's been about two hours, and that's, jeez, I bet you the last 20 minutes I've been goofing around grinding on that, that piece and etching it and normalizing. So but about two hours into the process, and now we're ready to start forging a knife. Um, let's take a bet right now. Is the thing going to fall apart? Is it going to delaminate? Did I did my welds take or not? I'm wondering if it's going to split right down the middle. That's the first bet. I think it'll be okay. That's my guess. Second bet is do we get a pattern at all out of this son of a bitch? Yeah. Stay tuned. What we're going to do, I don't know, did I show you the billet that I cut off? 
think I did. I don't remember. I don't recall the billet anymore. 100% forge weld solid piece of pattern steel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and keep this the width and we'll stretch it out a little bit. I want a little bit more length there. Start tapering this end down for point. Put my glasses on. See what I'm doing. Snappy. Not too snappy. Let's thin that other side down while we're at it. Gonna stretch this tank out a little too. Well, most of it's tank. Stop and think about this a little bit. I think if I take this much for the tang, we'll be able to get, I would say, gosh, a blade eight, nine inches long. That's what I'm thinking. I kind of like that idea. Good to be at the easy part. Let's hope it's easy. Speaking to me yet. I don't feel where it wants to be. Thinner, I guess, is what I'm hearing. Thinner is what I'm hearing from it. awful thick, doesn't it? Jeez. Don't go thinner yet. Just a little bit thinner. Tang, but I see a pattern in there. That's a good thing. Drop that tang right about there, and then we can widen. Actually, no, we're going to stretch it a little bit, so we'll come back to about here. 
and then we can widen that blade out. What I wanted to do is use my fullering tool to drop that tang when I want it dropped. It gives me at least a chance for normal. Just a chance for it. Just from there. Oh my gosh. First day at the forge, you know what I mean? Oh, I give up. Goodbye. Alright, what I'm gonna do is make sure I have the symmetry the way I want it. So I'm not cleaning up a whole lot after. Taper. If I hold it at an angle like this, I should. When I hit here, I should be hitting both sides at once. And I should be able to do it the same way on this side and end up with a dagger. I hope. Let's see what we can do about setting this thing in here. But I wish that tang wasn't offset a little. It kind of throws my eyeballs off, but. Should be even. Should be able to keep her straight. Let's hope. Do it again. Different perspective on the things. I haven't gotten to setting up my two cameras again. I should do that. Again, angle there and angle with the hammer. Many 
being a, a natural thing, can you see it daggering up there a little bit? Yeah, we're recording. We will be getting there. I think I should be making a lot more progress than I am. the piece with the hammer. You gotta keep your eyes on the game here. I'm not hating that. I like it a little wider. I'm not hating it. A couple more times. Alright, we'll drop down to the smaller hammer now. A little bit more control. something for grinding, right? They tell me the smart ones say forge big, grind small. Something like that. Grind small. Hotter would be cleaner. horrible thing in the world. Both sides are about the same thickness. Let me heat that up. I'll show you what I'm doing. It's probably a common technique, but it's something that if you don't think about it, uh, you might want to know. See, I'm kind of wavy on the edges here. So what I want to do is I want to straighten that. But if I start pounding here, I'm just going to flatten everything. So by coming in at an angle, can you see that? Was I, I'm getting a contradictory angle on the other side. And then I can just roll this piece. Now I want this relatively flat. See there. But then I'll lift the piece up as I come down to the point. And that way, you always have a tangent or, a, I don't know, an adjacent angle on your hammering. Tipping down, rolling, flattish, rolling up like that to help clean that up a little. So I'm kind of liking that. <clears throat> and you know, I'm testing my luck here anyway. I'm wondering if I want to try to throw a fuller in there. I just don't know. Never done a fuller. What do you say? Do it or don't do it? I agree, don't do it. All right, let's do it. What I have is this one. I just need to make sure I got enough length, which I do. All right, let's do it. I've never done it before. Let's do it. Try to mark it down the center here. I hope I don't freak this thing up in the process. It isn't horrible. Keep going. I wish my spring suede was spring steel. It would give a little bit more control than it has. I'd rather have a spring going the other way, but... This 
suppose what we don't get done here, we can do on the grinder. It looks like a fuller. Not exactly in the center, but hey, you know what? Cheese with a cheese with a cheese with a cheese. A few more tries on it. It isn't horrible. I'm not disappointed, totally. On until we are disappointed, I guess what we'll do. That's what we should do. Keep going until you frig it up, Chandler. It's super crooked there. God dang it. Ethel. Well, you know what? Live and learn, right? Got stuff where I don't want it and things where I do want it. And I think we're going to be sad when we get done, but that's just the way it is. Be easier if that fuller tool 90 degrees. Alright, you can see the zigzagging, ningy nanging going on there. Let's uh, see what we can do about cleaning up the Estrella. Actually, I want to. I'm good. Yeah, let's just clean it up a little. Much more control to this thing being mild steel. You know, it's going to slide sideways. It's just, it's just not strong enough for what we're doing. We did the trick ish, but maybe not as well as I wanted it. We're going to play clean up a little bit on that full. Any of those stray hits, we're going to work into the bevel of the blade. And the rest of it, we'll pick up on the ground. Straight enough, all right. She ain't too snobby. Now, we ain't straight no more, no more. So, we need to take care of that. So, we got a little more meat on that side than that side. And uh, we'll take care of that with a little hammer in here. That'll bring things around, and then we'll have to grind one over there. Right. Let's see if we can get this blade back to where it wants to be. Or it should have been. As much as I wish I didn't have to do that. My fuller looks like fire crap. But I think we'll leave the rest up to the grinder. I need help. Aren't we lucky enough just to have gotten this far? This thing was a freaking piece of chainsaw blade not that long ago, children. Alright, so my tang's off Kettiwonk. I really don't want to do a hidden tang. I'm not in the mood for that. So we're going to get her straightened up, get her centered up, and then kind of try to widen that a little bit. Alright, so the problem is i got to move that tang. Actually, I only need to bend it. I think I'll do it. Gently here. I was going to do something different. Down the center of the tang, we're relatively straight. I'm okay with what we got going on here. Just got me into cheating, some bitches. All right. God, I think 
think I'm okay. Man, why do you never have the right tong for the job? I have like 500 times more tongs than I ever had. And now we're crooked catwalk again. But I never have the right tongue for the job. Well, that's not true. I never have the right tongue for the new job. New project, make your tongs first, eh? Yeah, right. Doing the fine, fine tunage here on blade and tang, make sure we're happy. Problem with my eyes is that with the glasses I can see up close, so I can see some of the stuff with the glasses, and then when I look over the glasses, everything's blurry from there where I want to pain in the ass. I need like two different magnifications, one for each eye, so I can open one eye and close the other. Right, I got a little bit of a wonka wonk going on there. I'm going to take some heat to fix that for what I want to do. And that's not what I want to do. I surely do. We got a good chance of it warping in the freaking quench anyway. Come on now. Why are you fighting? Why are you fighting me? I think we're okay. Get it this way. Something just telling me we ain't where we want to be. Yeah, there we go. That was the ticket. There we go. Alright, children. So, it ain't the prettiest little thing in the world, but did we delaminate from the weld? Nope. Which is cool. I mean, that was only, that was really the project. Dagger's the second part. Maybe I'll do two videos here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and normalize this a couple of times and we'll run over to the grinder. Boy, does that look like it goes off to one side there. In the camera I noticed that. It surely does. Well, we'll fix that. We'll normalize it and then we'll go back to the grinder. Sure is done. If we're going to be the rest to be done on the grinder, ain't the prettiest thing in the world. It looked nice before I put that puller in, but hopefully I can grind that where I want it to be. We are at um, one hour and or two hours and fifty minutes. So ten minutes to grind and harden. I think I could almost pull that off. But if you think about it, I took a twenty-minute break to deal with you know the etching that this piece here. So um, we'll call it uh, right now. It's ten minutes to one. At one thirty, we'll call it actually three hours because I did have a break there. Plus, I had all the intro and stuff like that that I was um, telling you about. So. We will uh, see if we can get this thing done in three hours. It's just, hey, why not? You see it done on TV, we, we can make it a challenge for ourselves. So let, let this cool, and we'll uh, normalize it one more time. We'll hit the grinder. We've never done a fuller before. I'm going to go ahead. I can just barely, with this attachment, get in here and be able to grind on that. Hopefully, I can get that fuller that I hammered and cleaned up. At the belt on the wall. doing the trick I'd say. I'd say that's enough. We don't want to cut through, that would be funny, wouldn't it? Okay, pretty good, right? 
That's the fuller, and since it's a special attachment, I'm going to go ahead and jump up to a few more belts, and I'll, I'll get her cleaned up the best I can. Hopefully, I won't have to come back and revisit it. That doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, I went up to 300 grit. I'm just going to get messed up when I heat treat anyway. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, shape this knife up, and see about getting these other bevels in, and go from there. What do is get rid of the waviness, kind of shape this profile get the tank cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and start working on a bevel and a point. First issue that I have, if you take a look, all right, that one's kind of even. On this side, the fuller's off to the right a little bit, so that may make us look goofy, but handmade is handmade, right? So as long as we get the point lined up with the tang, I think we'll be okay. little wood jig things that I made as a video a long time ago I can't believe I, I haven't replaced these because I really would like to but uh, you know I do a lot of railroad spike knives and I don't have the opportunity to lock this tang into some particular angle so with this I'll be able to put it on there there's a skew on the bottom and it's the, the, the I have made two of them it's the most aggressive of the two and hopefully that'll be the angle I'm looking for
And I think that's a good angle. Gets me just about to the fuller. I don't want to go too far because I want to make sure that we're centered when we get all done. So now I get to flip her around and I'll come back when I have all four sides done. Alrighty, so here we have it. Back up a little bit for you. Yeah. Alright, it's not perfect by any means, but it's there and it kind of looks pretty cool. Um, I wish everything was centered a little better than it was, but it is what it is and I might be able to clean it up a little bit later. Uh, my plunges are a little bit offset. They're not quite the same, so I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. I might thin this area out on this side. Um, but you know what? Um, in the end, I guess a master would have those things down pat. This is my very first um, dagger, like this kind of dagger anyway. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with what's going on right now. I think. We will see when we get done. All right, I'm going to clean up the tang a little bit and we'll go ahead and harden it see what happens. Probably just shatter. Alright, there she is. Clean as she's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and take the blade and bring that down to about 300 grit so that uh, once it's hardened I don't have as far to go. Uh, I am seeing some... I don't know if you can see it. There's some texture here. I'm going to call it texture. Alright, look at this one right here. It's right above my finger. I don't know if that's all the way through or not. But there's lines in here. This one here. I'm not liking it in any way whatsoever. But, continue, continue. Live and learn. I knew what I was doing. Boy, I have a hard time sometimes with grinding. Maybe everybody does. I'll tell ya. It sure is a party looking thing. All right, let's go ahead and. Jeez, uh, I don't know, man. Well, I know what we're going to do. Let's harden the damn thing. We're going to harden it. We're going to get this, this knife done for sure. That's the objective. It's 1.30, so. Hey, it's one. No, it's not hardened yet. Dang it. So we didn't make a three hours, but it took me a little longer to do that. Didn't they give these guys like, like an extra hour if they have to forge weld? Maybe. They'd be all over these marks, though. Well, maybe a couple of them. Well, that one's still on there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's harden this thing up. I got the edge a little narrower than I want it to be. So, who knows? Maybe the thing will just crack anyway. So, here we come to the part of the project where I want to harden this and temper it. Chainsaw blade, you tell me, water, oil, what? I am the foggiest freaking idea. So let's go with oil first. It's the least. Oh man, this thing isn't perfect. It's pretty looking though. Uh, let's go with oil, and if that don't do it, then we'll jump to water. Um, I have the foggiest idea what we're going to use. I have the foggiest idea what we're supposed to use. Normally, this is where I go through my test. I'd have a little piece of that steel, a little extra and uh, draw it out and do the old breaking thing and I actually have this piece I wonder if I should do that before I break something up just, yeah we'll call this a normalizing section for the blade and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a piece of that stuff let's see what we get we'll go through my test I'll come back I won't bother showing you again there's, there's a couple videos of it conclusion I found that the oil uh, the water didn't harden any better than the oil did uh, I'm not exactly happy with the hardness, but we get, again, we're working with the chainsaw chain, so it's going to be a mixture of all sorts of things, I'm sure. So we're going to go ahead and uh, quench in oil. That's the plan. All right, being so cold, the oil was, was relatively solid, so I just took a big-ass piece of steel and, and uh, warmed it up a little bit so it's not a solid. There's still a little coagulation at the bottom, but at least it's warmer than it was. We're going to bring this knife up to critical temperature. And see what happens. Hope we don't hear a ping. Here goes, here goes nothing being the, the because of that one warp that I had. The uh, quench is facing north and south. We're up to critical temperature. No, we're not. 
My tip was not where I wanted it to be. I'm coming back. Up the temperature right now. I'm pretty damn close to being happy. Uh, superstitious as I am after a, a couple of warps. The quench bucket's facing north and south. And here we go. Give it a second. Only moving forward and backwards. We're going to check it for warpage. Where are we? We're still burning a little bit there. I didn't hear any pinging. I didn't hear any warping. Or hear any warping. I don't see any warping. Looks good. We'll finish the quench. I think we might have gotten lucky. I think we might have gotten lucky, lucky, lucky on that one. So there you have it. Straight as a freaking arrow. Is it losing it? No, that looks good to me. Can't tell my glasses are. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, we're good. Good, good, good. Rinse that off in some soapy water here a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Grab a hot piece of dumbass. Oh, mother. Oh. You think O'Keefe's more important? <laughs> God dang it. I put it in the water. I do after it's quenched and I know that it's safe. I put it in the water because I have a little soap in that water too. Just to cool it down the rest of the way and I dry. I had it in there and I grabbed this freaking tang and it was still a little bit warm. <laughs> but we be here. It's not hot anymore. Throw a file on it. I don't like the way that sounds at all. Hell, that ain't hard. That ain't hard at all, children. We're going to water. We're going to clean this thing up. We're going to go to the water and then we will regret it. Damn it! No, I'm gonna regret this, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Here we go. I'm moving with the blade, not side to side. I didn't hear anything crazy happening. Don't fall, you're freaking hard. You can't be falling. We still are straight. think. No, I got a little S warp. Just a little S warp in that thing, but that's alright, I can deal with that. It's very, very minor. It'd be a tricky thing to grind. Well, it ain't the hardest steel in the world that I've ever seen, but it's much harder in the water. Alright, let's clean it up and I'll come back when she's all done. Got one minute left on this card. I've never uh, never got cut by a knife before today and the knife dropped and I went to catch it and I had you know I haven't even put an edge on this thing yet intentionally and uh, it cut me a little bit but all right so we got the bevels in now I need to go back and clean that fuller out and get that polished up and uh, we're, we'll go from there I'm almost out of time on this card all right fuller's cleaned up uh, we haven't polished it I'm gonna go to the buffing wheel this thing is a thousand times sharper than I'd like to take a knife to a buffing wheel, so I'll be a little bit scared right now. Alrighty, here she is all polished up. Boy, I'll tell you, this thing looks nasty all on its own, right? Let's see, you know, not a bad job. I haven't put the edge on yet. I think I'm going to go ahead and throw a handle on this. I'm running out of video t uh, card here, though. For what I get myself into. All we wanted to do was make a video about forge welding chainsaw chain. Man, we're still at it. There she is, all polished up, and that is one the one very <laughs> nice looking knife. Oh my gosh, I've never made a fuller before, and I think it doesn't look too bad, really. It doesn't look too bad at all. That one's the one that's offset. That one's a little better off. Uh, the sucker is sharper than hell now, and I don't want it to be, but that's where it, the way it is. Uh, I put as much of a grind on it as I'm going to as far as polishing and grinding goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the video. Uh, maybe I'll split it into two videos, double my views, double my money, because I think this is worth looking at. I almost hate to etch it. I mean, it's pretty just like that. I wish it were a good steel. I don't think it's going to hold an edge very well. But before I put the final edge on it, I guess what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill my holes, which I didn't do before I hardened it, guys. You forgot to remind me. 
So hopefully I can drill my holes and uh, and then we'll just put a, a simple wooden handle on it because I'm not in the mood to do anything else with it on account of the fact of right there. You see it? Yep. Now that isn't delam. That isn't uh, a stress crack from the from the uh, quench. That's uh, part of the forge weld. Yep, and I'll tell you, you know, it might be worthwhile just to shorten this blade and re-grind re it, but it is what it is what it is, and I'm not going to go any farther, but if this were a really good steel, then I would. Um, this will be a decorator piece, and you just display it on this side. Wait, not that side, this side. Oh, wait, it goes right through. <laughs> but anyway, lessons learned. Fuller, chainsaw. Dagger. I think I did one other dagger, but nothing, nothing like this. Let's get a handle on it. Put the finishing touches on the handle, the wood handle. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this knife in the etch. Problem is, I don't have an etch container that's deep enough for this knife. So I found that little jar. We can do it in two steps. So I do want the handle to be etched a little too up until the wood. So uh, I'll go ahead and pour the etch into this jar. And, boy, I wish I had something taller, but I don't. We'll let her etch for a few minutes while I uh, finish grinding on that, uh, or, you know, sanding the, the handles. Well, that took a heck of a lot longer than I thought it was going to to finish up. But uh, it's because my five-minute epoxy took like 35 minutes to harden in this freaking temperature. But anyways, for a handle, I, I got some burls that I've, that I've been saving. Um, they've been air-dried for, I, I don't know, a couple years anyway. Slice them into um, slices, uh, scales on the bandsaw, plane them off, and I mean there's some really pretty texture in there. I've never used them before. What do you think, huh? Holy cow, isn't that the prettiest thing? A little tongue oil on there. So again, it may not be, I don't know, I, I think for this knife, when I show you what it look, looks like, this handle could be a little bit bigger and a little, little heavier, but it is what it is. Uh, it turned out very nice. It's uh, we've got some you know some shape to it, so you, it'll stay in your hand okay. Um, there are a couple of flat edges to it, which the flat edges are perpendicular to the blade. So so I think that works well in a in a slashing type blade, which this is. But um, ready to see the blade? You ready for this thing to be over with? How's that look? Matter of fact, I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see what you can see. Is that the coolest thing or what? Actually, it's even cooler when I roll it over. <laughs> you like that? So, etch this up. Ferric chloride, ferric chloride acid. Yeah, I think that's what it is. The pattern is, it's not crazy in your face. It's a, I mean, it's there. It certainly is there. But uh, it's not as much of a pattern as I expected. It's not as in your face as the uh, as the motorcycle chain was but of course we'd put a twist on that too right so we got um, we got a lot going on there I etched it up now again there is a flaw in the blade can you see it there yeah right there all right and that flaw has a matching flaw on the other side so you know let's focus on that so you can see it for sure so that's, a, that's an, an issue with the weld in that one flipping spot. There was one other spot back here someplace, but I think that might have gotten ground out. So the one little mistake makes this knife not perfect. But holy cow, if that's not, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Guys, this started out as a chainsaw blade, chainsaw chain. Four of them, I think. Forge welded, drew it out, my very first chainsaw knife. My very first fuller, and you look at that fuller, I don't think you got much to complain about. Oh, for a, for handmade, and especially the first one, what's the best way to look at it? Yeah, it's there, man. Pretty cool. It's the first knife that's ever cut me. <laughs> wow, you can't see it. <laughs> it got small. All it did was fall on me, and that was before I put the edge on it. This is probably... <laughs> the sharpest knife that I've ever made it just is freaking out oh, where am I? I'm up here freaking amazing I mean it's just 
It is a scary freaking night. It really is. Holy tamales. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this one. This is a long one. I'm not sure if it's going to be one or two videos, but that is a chainsaw, chain, pattern welded, forge welded, pattern steel, whatever freaking names you want to give it, dagger, and I'll tell you, <laughs> oh mama, so you could do some damage with that one. Thanks for sticking around for that one, I think, except for there's one little flaw, which again, and I don't know, maybe I will. I could just shorten this knife a little bit, regrind it, and take that out, and then this thing would be 100%. But short of that, for a collector, uh, this is one beautiful one of a kind. Definitely one of a kind knife, for sure. Take care. We'll catch you on the next one. She's birdie. Bye.